113 miles of highway through a chain of coral and limestone islands, Key West isn't that far geographically from the city of Miami, but it may as well be on the other side of the world. West Florida. Time and people operate differently here. A good friend of mine likes to think of the Keys as one of the last respites for true bohemians, and I think he's onto something. Home to musicians, artists, and writers like Hemingway, there is a cadence here that is unmatched anywhere else in the lower 50. Not to mention, it's the most Caribbean-esque kiteboarding spot in the USA. After a couple of hectic weeks of travel, I'm ready to see what this pace of life is all about. I'm making my way to meet up with Nancy from Ocean Freaks, and hopefully, we'll get some wind for a session. Alright, we just arrived in Key West. Uh, let's go get a scooter and go play! I hit the streets of Key West ready to explore and have some fun. If there's one thing I love about traveling to coastal locations, it would have to be the seafood. Well, that and the cold beer. The next couple of days, I caught up on some much needed relaxation time, but by day three, well, something was missing. Today I am in Key West, Florida, but sadly it is off season, so it is not windy. And it's beautiful. The water is beautiful, the palm trees are amazing, the sun is shining, uh, but sadly, not kiting conditions. Even though Key West is a well-known kiting spot and has great, great kite conditions, there is a lot more that this place has to offer. So, we are going to uh, let go of the fact that we're not kiting and then explore. So, let's go and see what we can find out here in Key West. Something I've come to realize about kiteboarding is part of the reason we love it so much is the fact that we can't always practice. We have to learn patience and implement a bit of planning. If we learn to take life as it comes, well, I think you'd be surprised at what it might throw at you. On day five, things turned around and I got exactly what I was hoping for. All right guys, so it's our lucky day. Key West, Florida, Hurricane Home Arena, and uh, it's a bit windy, which means we get to go kite surfing. So Nancy from Ocean Freaks is gonna come and take us out for a little session today. Despite the overcast weather, I was so grateful to get some much needed time on the water in Key West. On sunnier days, this is hands down one of the most amazing places to kite in the U.S. A few miles out in what the locals call the backcountry, you can find miles of shallow, knee-deep blue water. For me, this is my happy place. Riding here got me thinking. Regardless of location, temperature, or even the wind conditions, most of us are happiest when we're out here on the water. Be that in our own backyard or somewhere new like Key West. That said, as much as I'm loving the good vibes and people in this place, I find I'm longing for the cool winds and water of Squamish, BC. I guess you can take the girl out of Canada, but you can't. Well, you know where I'm going with this. All right, so it's a weird feeling, but it's really exciting too. Uh, Flying into Vancouver today and seeing the mountains and the water actually felt like coming home. And uh, nothing really feels better than that feeling of home, uh, which is something I wrote a bunch about in my blog recently. Like, what does home mean when you're a traveler? Because home is not a house and home is not, you know, a place or a city or anywhere specific. But home is the people you care about and the people that care about you. And the places you feel really good, like here in Vancouver, BC, excited to be home. Hey, this is Crystal Vaness with Mac Kiteboarding and in today's vlog we are talking about the wind window. What is the wind window and why is it so important for kiteboarders? To put it simply, the wind window is the area of the sky where the kite is able to fly. The wind window is a half dome. So if you picture a dome and you cut the dome in half at the upwind and downwind line, everything downwind of you is the wind window. And the size of the wind window is determined by the length of your kite line plus you. So if you have a 24 meter kite line, your wind window is approximately 25 meters above you, all the way down through the sides of you, and all the way downwind of you. 
Okay, so remember your kite can only fly in the wind window. So this is a really important thing to know when you arrive at a new kite beach. So take a moment before you launch your kite to determine where the wind window is. And actually, this is critical information if you want to know where to even launch your kite. So assuming at this stage you already know the difference between upwind and downwind, but I wanted to share my favorite way to determine upwind and downwind in a new kite spot. So I like to get to the spot and stand with the wind at my back and turn until I can feel the wind, hear the wind, blowing at an equal volume over both of my ears. So in this example, the wind is blowing out my back, which means this direction is downwind of me, the rider, and that direction is upwind. So you may remember from your lessons that the instructor talked a lot about the wind window and the clock and how straight up is 12 o'clock and how on the ground or on the water is three and nine. So if you are flying your kite at 12 at the neutral zone, one, two, three, and of course, 11, 10, and nine, these are the only possible places for your kite to fly at the top of the window. But the next thing you may want to know more about is the power zone. So that is everything in front of you. Everything downwind from the edge of the window is the power zone. Remember, if your kite is anywhere just at the edge of the window, between nine and three, it's in a neutral zone. You really can't get too much pull from it. Um, but if your kite is somewhere down towards the front of your dome, it is in a power zone. So in the diagram shown, the red zone is where you are going to get the most pull from your kite. The yellow zone is where you'll get some power, and the green zone is where you will be neutral and pretty safe if you want to uh, just put your kite up and relax. So a kite has the most power when it is directly downwind of the flyer in the power zone, and the least power when it is right up at the edge of the wind window. When your kite is directly downwind of you in the power zone, there's a lot more surface area exposed to the wind than if your kite is above you in one of the neutral zones. So this is why we always launch our kites on the edges of the wind window at 9 and 3. We never launch our kites downwind because it's pretty dangerous. You get dragged or thrown pretty far. Um, the whole point of kiteboarding is to have fun, not to get dragged down the beach on your face. Uh, but if you have had to relaunch your kite in water before, you may have an idea of what it feels like to launch your kite downwind. If you've ever been in a situation where your kite has crashed in the water straight downwind of you, and you pick it back up and get thrown from the power of the kite, you know what it's like to have your kite flying through the power zone. Now, once you start progressing and getting more advanced, you may like to use the power zone to your advantage, doing tricks, kite loops, uh, and you actually enjoy feeling the power of the kite. But as you're kind of learning and progressing and getting comfortable, it's a lot easier to fly your kites in the yellow zone rather than in the red zone or the hot zone or the danger zone, as some like to call it. And the good thing to remember is anytime you just want to take a break or chill or you're stressed out and not sure what to do with your kite, just put it straight above you right at 12. That is the neutral, neutral zone. You are safe there. So this has been Crystal Vanessa with Mac Kiteboarding. I hope you enjoyed this information on what the wind window is. If you have any more questions about it, please post it in the comments. And of course, if you have any ideas for our next videos and what kind of information you want to receive, comment. Uh, we'd love it if you would like this video and give it a share to your other kiter buddies. And we will see you next time on Chasing the Dreams.